So that's my son. He's down here at athletics training. He's just warming up to get ready for his session. And he would be absolutely mortified if he knew I was filming him. He'd be terribly embarrassed amongst all these peers. And when it comes to embarrassment, that also rolls into IT. Let's talk about how you could get incredibly embarrassed. Anyway, for the welfare of my son, I've now retreated to the car. Uh, the last thing he wants to see is his dad with a computer <laughs> out by the athletics track. Also cause of embarrassment is I forgot my normal reading glasses, so I have to wear my prescription sunglasses in order to see the computer in the car. So while we're on the topic of embarrassment, I mentioned that in the world of IT, there is other things that can be embarrassed besides <laughs> having a laptop in the car. And the biggest cause of embarrassment used to be outages. If your system went down unexpectedly and users couldn't get in, then generally you'd be marched up in front of the management the following day or following after the weekend with a please explain as to what's gone on. But I've discovered in the last decade, I think that trend is changing and not just from an IT purely perspective, but even the people that use IT systems, i.e. your customers. And probably a good example of that is if I go to an automatic teller machine and I go there, I've got my card and I'm ready to get some money out. If it says the machine is currently unavailable, do I throw my toys out of the pram and switch banks? Do I say, yep, that's it, that's the last straw? No, if there's an outage, i.e. I can't go to the ATM, I'll probably try a different ATM or I'll just say, well, I'll try again tomorrow. I might be frustrated, I might throw out the occasional tweet or something on Facebook, but ultimately, I'm not going to change that bank. Similarly, if I book a flight on my normal airline and I have some problem where you know they're, I, they, they cancel my flight or they rearrange my flight, same thing, I'll probably vent some frustration, but I'm really never going to use that airline again. Outages have to be incredibly dire and repeated and consistent and incredibly inconvenienced into customers for those customers to actually switch. Even you know, as long as you're providing some sort of product, there's a general stickiness that the customers will forgive an outage. But there is another form of embarrassment in IT, which is the absolute icing on the cake. This is the one that will absolutely get your customers away from you and absolutely put you out of business. And it by far exceeds the threat of outages nowadays, and that is the threat of being hacked. Or effectively, the embarrassment comes from a lack of security. You have an outage in your system, people will forgive you. If you get hacked, people will never forgive you because ultimately you've breached their trust. They trusted you with their data and now that data has been leaked or uh, illegally obtained in some way. For that reason, it's funny how we talk about embarrassment in IT when we do things like uh, having to go up to management and say, I need to have an outage for this, need to have an outage for that. But ultimately, that embarrassment pales into insignificance versus going up to management and saying, yes, we've lost our data. It's gone to an outside source. As a result, any embarrassment you may have thought you're going to be suffering because you want to go up to management and say, yes, the next three month security patch has come out for the database, 1916, 1917, 1918, etc. We might require a little bit of an outage or we might require a little bit of budget for regression testing, or we might require some testers, etc. We need effectively resources to do this. Any form of embarrassment you may have had to regularly go up to your management, to can you know, repeatedly go to the coal face and say, we need some time, we need some money, etc. All of that is nothing compared to the embarrassment that you would suffer if your system got hacked. And the vast majority of these RUs, release updates that we release, are all about fixing security holes that have come to light generally in the software plethora that runs both the Oracle database and systems worldwide. We all remember log for java I can't stress enough, just because it is going to be a little bit more effort, a little bit more time, a little bit more money on your part to move to a cadence of applying these release updates as they come out, as opposed to, say, once a year grabbing every fourth one. The risk of losing your data due to a hack by far outweighs any risk that you have due, due to applying these things every three months. By increasing that cadence, you mean you have to 
perhaps take a few corners, cut a few corners when it comes to the amount of regression testing you do. Or even if you simply say, look, it's all going to be too hard. We're not going to do any regression testing at all. We're just going to wear it and take the risk if we have some sort of regression. We'll react quickly when it happens. Even that, I still think, is worth undertaking versus the risk of actually getting hacked. Because once you get security hacked, there's no way back. Personally, for myself in Australia, we've had two incredibly high-profile breaches over the last couple of months, uh, a large telco called Optus and a health provider, which is obviously even more uh, serious, called Medibank. Both of them have recently been hacked. And rest assured, any kind of publicity they had up until that moment is gone out the window. All people talk about now in terms of Optus, oh, is that's the company that got hacked. Medibank, that's the company that got hacked. It's not worth that risk to be one of those companies, in my view. Even if you're currently applying your security patches, say, annually, or you're applying your security patches every six months, wherever you're at, if you're not at the cadence of as the patches become available, you're aggressively looking at applying them, I can't stress enough, I think you're running a risk and a balancing act that is probably going to be far tilted in the favor of you absolutely destroying any faith you had with customers by getting hacked because you missed a security patch. If you can say to your customers, to your management, to the auditors, whoever has a vested interest in security in your systems, that yes, we did get hacked, we had some sort of slip up, but that was not because we weren't applying security patches, that we were fully up to date, we had done our absolute best efforts to actually make sure the systems could not get hacked, then I think you're in a far better stance from your personal and IT department reputation than saying, yes, we got hacked, or oh, we haven't applied patches for a year. That's just my piece of advice. I'm sitting in my car so my son doesn't get embarrassed by his dad at athletics training. You can avoid being embarrassed by making sure you jump to a regular cadence for security patches because, rest assured, none of us in the IT space, as, as IT managers, as IT vendors, want to be in any way associated with systems that got hacked because they weren't kept up to date with security patches. So stay safe, stay secure, and make sure you apply your patches regularly.